Welcome to this proof of concept video. The goal today is to tack on one brilliant little idea to the Euclidean algorithm to turn it from an algorithm that computes the greatest common divisor into an algorithm that solves linear Diophantine equations, finds modular inverses, performs the Chinese remainder theorem, and much more. So this new algorithm is called the extended Euclidean algorithm. Sometimes it's called magic box. It always seems to come with a pile of opaque rules about adding numbers from one box to the one diagonally below and over to the side, blah, 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 blah. So that's how I first learned it. And I could perform it just fine until I didn't do it for a week. And then like my ATM pin during a pandemic, it's gone from my brain forever. But the truth is the extended Euclidean algorithm is just the Euclidean algorithm plus one clever little idea. No need to memorize anything, really. Don't memorize stuff in math. Just understand the key idea so you can always recreate your mathematics for yourself anywhere, anytime. To explain what the extended Euclidean algorithm does, we need to return to what the Euclidean algorithm does. The Euclidean algorithm finds the GCD, or greatest common divisor, of two integers. It's the largest integer that's a factor or divisor of the two that you've got. So for example, the GCD of 15 and 12 is the biggest integer dividing both of them, namely 3. If you need a review on the GCD or the Euclidean algorithm, check the links in the description below. Okay, but it's important just how the Euclidean algorithm accomplishes this, the process that gets you to the GCD. It does this by charting a course, giving a recipe, a set of instructions as to how to add and subtract the two numbers from each other repeatedly to get the GCD. The point of the extended Euclidean algorithm is to capture the process, not just the result. So the extended Euclidean algorithm is exactly the Euclidean one, but plus a little bookkeeping along the way that lets it end up with more information at the end. That extra information will allow us to do a variety of things, all of which are consequences of solving a linear Diophantine equation. A linear Diophantine equation is a linear equation, first of all, something of the form ax plus by equals c, say, for example, 2x plus 4y equals 6. But here I'm interested in solving for the, uh, the integer solutions. So typically, that means I'm only considering integer a, b, c in the first place, and I'm looking for integer x and y. That's what the word Diophantine refers to, integer solutions. Diophantus was a famous old Greek, and you can pass an enjoyable half hour on Wikipedia if you like. For example, there's a Diophantine equation in the form of a poem from the 5th century, which gives his age at death. Anyway, back to work. An extended Euclidean algorithm will solve linear Diophantine equations. In particular, it will solve ax plus by equals the GCD of a and b. If I want to solve linear equations in greater generality, meaning for other values of c besides the GCD of a and b, then I can use a solution to this equation to build others. I'll cover that in another video, but for now our goal and task is to solve this one, ax plus by equals GCD a b. In other words, we want to find an integer linear combination of a and b that gives the GCD. That is, we want to add and subtract copies of a and b from each other until we get to the GCD. Sound familiar? That's exactly what the Euclidean algorithm does. So we can just watch what we're doing during the Euclidean algorithm and siphon off that bit of extra info along the way. Okay, this will only make sense with an example. Let's take an example of a Euclidean algorithm computation for the GCD of 196 and 180. We start with this pair, 196 and 180, and we perform the division algorithm. That is, we write 196 as some number of copies of 180 plus a remainder. That gives us 196 is 1 times 180 plus 16. Now, the whole trick in the Euclidean algorithm is to replace the bigger number, 196, with the remainder, 16. This makes the problem smaller, and we just have another go at it. Remember that the key here is that the GCD of the first pair, 196 and 180, is the same as the GCD of the new pair, 180 and 16. So solving the smaller problem actually solves the original one. So we start over, we use the division algorithm again. 180 is 11 copies of 16 plus four. Then we replace 180 with four, so our new pair is just 16 and four. We divide again, so 16 is four copies of four plus zero. At this point, we notice the zero and we check back to the last remainder before that, or the smallest non-zero number we've seen in our various pairs. It's four, and that tells us that the GCD is four. Great, now for the extended Euclidean algorithm, okay, it will allow us to solve 
196x plus 180y equals 4. It's important here that I have equals 4, that it's the GCD of 196 and 180 that's sort of my target. The extended Euclidean algorithm specifically answers that particular question. I want to think of this question as asking for a recipe for the number 4 in terms of the numbers 196 and 180. So keep that idea of a recipe in mind. Okay, first step of the Euclidean algorithm as before. We write 196 in terms of 180 by the division algorithm. Now what I'm going to do is kind of expand the 196, 180, and 16 into these little recipe cards. The cards are basically a way of attaching extra data to each number. So the extra data is a value of x and y. That's the recipe, which when plugged into the equation 196 plus 180y gives the number. So for example, in the first card, using x equals 1 and y equals 0 in the main equation 196x plus 180y, will give us 196. That's the recipe. It tells you what x and y to use to get 196. The second card tells us what we need um, to get 180. We need x equals 0 and y equals 1. The third card tells us that we can use x equals 1 and y equals negative 1 to get 16. But wait a second, where'd we get that info from? The first two cards were very clear. To get 196 or 180, it's pretty obvious what to pick for x and y. But 16? So recall that the original equation is written across the top of the cards. 196 is 1 times 180 plus 16. But actually, the other rows of the cards work the same way. So for example, the x values, which is the middle row, satisfy that 1 is 1 times 0 plus 1. And the y values, 0 is 1 times 1 plus negative 1. So we can figure out what to write on the last card by just picking the thing that makes the equations true. So for example, y on the last card needs to be negative 1, because if I take 1 times 1, that's what I need to add to it to get 0. Similarly for the x value, so pause the video here and verify that. Okay, so there's another way to think about what's happening. Let's write out the three equations the cards represent, one above the other. So remember, I'm claiming that the first card minus the second card should give the third card. So each card is an equation, so I'm saying the first equation minus the second one should give the third one. And this actually makes sense column by column. The left column holds true, 196 minus 180 is 16. The middle column, that's the x's, holds true too, 1 minus 0 is 1. And the right column, that's the y's, says that 0 minus 1 is minus 1. That's all there is to the Euclidean algorithm. We just keep a recipe card on each number we come across as we go through the regular Euclidean algorithm. So here's the first line in the algorithm, done as recipe cards. Here's the second line of the Euclidean algorithm. Now we want to make it into the extended Euclidean algorithm by making it into these recipe cards. The recipe for 180 is still valid, so we already know the x and y on the 180 card. We just copy it down from the row above. Okay, same for 16. So all we need to do is figure out the recipe for 4. So we look at the x's and we see that x equals negative 11 is what's needed on the last card to make the true equation. 0 is 11 times 1 minus 11. And finally, y has to be 12. Okay, so we now have a recipe card for 4. But 4 is what we were after all along. The original question was how to make 4 as a recipe in terms of 196 and 180. So we're done. The solution is x equals negative 11 and y equals 12. Okay, now a few comments are in order here. So first, remember that this only works to solve ax plus by equals the gcd of a and b. That is, it gives us a recipe for GCD AB in terms of A and B. However, if you want a recipe for 2 times the GCD of A and B, you can just double the recipe you have, double X and double Y, and you double the result. Similarly, you can obtain any multiple of the GCD. It turns out that the equation doesn't have any solutions if C is not the multiple of the GCD. Because both A and B are multiples of the GCD, so it would be pretty hard for C not to be. All right. 
Next comment is that this only gives one solution to the equation, one recipe. You might ask, are there others? Well, in fact, there are, and you can pretty, pretty easily access them. So the trick is to add recipes for zero to your recipe for the GCD. So solving linear Diophantine equations in general is going to be a topic for a whole other video, but those are the key ideas. Okay, and finally, I'll point out one cool application of this algorithm, which is modular inverses. Suppose you want to know, what is the inverse of A modulo B? So you're asking for a solution to AX congruent to 1 mod B. But in other words, that just says AX is equal to 1 plus some number of Bs, plus BY for some Y. So, just rearranging a little bit, we have AX minus BY equals 1. So, you can just solve this using the extended Euclidean algorithm, and it gives you yet another reason why you can only take the modular inverse of something coprime to the modulus. So, get out and do some computations and enjoy.